Hey everyone, have you ever wanted to create your own custom 3D objects and then bring them into DaVinci Resolve? I'm going to show you just that. We're going to create a simple 3D object and I'm going to texture it and I'm going to show you how to do some steps to bring it into DaVinci Resolve to make it really simple to get that textured and looking good into your project. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I'm in Blender right now. Blender is a free program. If you don't have it, I'll give you the link in the description. You can go ahead and download that and get started. So we have the default cube here and we'll go ahead and use that as an object to start with. And I've got a few plugins that I'm gonna show you. They just make things a lot easier. And the links for all these are in the description. Here we have a cube and I'm in the object mode. And if you wanna take a look at different views, you just click these up here. I have a plugin called Box Cutter. And so now if I just draw some shapes here, rotate that, you can see I can just cleanly cut through that and change our 3D geometry here. So I'm gonna make a couple of cuts just something to change it up to give us a little bit of geometry. A cube would be really easy to do, but uh, if you want to create something different, you're going to need to add a few more steps in there. So now that I have everything cut the way I want it. So if we have any of these Boolean cutters here, we have to apply all these. And so you can go in here and pull these down and just hit apply. Or if you have the box cutter, you can hit the D key and then pull up this little menu here and then you're gonna get a smart apply and it's going to apply all those modifiers. So now our, our 3D geometry is what it is here. We also have a light and you can see these cutters. I'm gonna go ahead and delete those cutters out. Okay, so we have a camera that's built into Blender and I'm gonna add another light and it's going to be a point light. And so let's move that up. Something like this to give us another light source there. I want to go ahead and apply some textures. If we want to see the textures, we can click on the material preview here. You can see I don't have anything applied. You can also use the rendered view. And so that's going to show the lighting a little bit better. I'm going to look at the material preview here and I've got another add on and it's extreme PBR pro. I've got this paving, this wood parquet. There's a whole bunch of different materials in this. I'm going to go ahead and apply this material. So add new. Make sure it's selected first and we want to delete this out. And so we can see that material is now added to there. And you can see on my cuts, uh, we're, we're not seeing material yet. And I'm going to get to that here in a second, but everything else looks pretty good. We've got that material on there. Now we want to go basically to the UV editing tab up here on the top. Using that PBR Pro, it has put down a texture here, kind of an outline here for the UVs. And what I want to do though, I've got another plugin that I that is really great. And hit the N key here, and I'm going to go to Zen UV. I'm going to go ahead and delete out this UV map that was automatically created. Just delete that out. And Basically, because the seams weren't marked correctly, we're not getting all of those to, to show up there. And so if we mark all of these seams here, we can use a Zen UV wrap, and then it's gonna place them on there in a better manner. And so now if we go to the shading, we can see that that shading is now on these pieces that were cut throughout that. And so let's go ahead and do one more thing here. All right, so if we go up here to the render properties with that object selected, uh, we can see that there are a number of things that we can, we can do here. And I wanna bake these textures onto this object quickly. And I've got another plugin that's called PBR Bake, Simple PBR Bake. And it, it really is very simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that object on here onto our list. And then I can select the bakes that I want. And I wanna select a specular and the diffuse. That's really all I'm going to need. I can select my texture settings. 1K will be just fine. Here's my export settings. I want to go ahead and export my bakes. Okay, so now I can go in here. I've got that selected. I'll go ahead and bake that out. I've got to do one more thing. Let me go here to the shading tab. This thing doesn't like this transparent BSDF. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete that out. I don't need it. Go back to the modeling layout. So I'm gonna copy the objects and apply the bakes. I'm gonna call this cube bake. And we'll go ahead and bake those. 
All right, so those bakes were ran now, and you can see my original cube was hidden here. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. I don't need it anymore. And so now I have a new uh, geometry here, and I have my bake geometry here, and that's what it looks like. So I'm pretty happy with that. So now go ahead and select that object, go back to the UV editing. And I wanna do two things here. I'm gonna just check to make sure my, my textures were not stretched. So if you go to this pull down here and then display the stretch, they're all blue. So that's looking good. If I saw red there, I'd have a problem. Zen UV has got another feature. You can look at these textures and see where these are being applied. You can see how they're going to be applied, which is really cool, but enough about that. I have all the three files that I need, so I can go ahead and shut down Blender. All right, so I'm done in Blender now. I'm gonna go to DaVinci Resolve. I'm starting in the edit page. If you need to get there, hit the shift and number four. And I wanna grab a fusion composition, pull it down into the timeline. I'm just gonna use the standard five seconds and go to the fusion page. So next, what I wanna do is go to Fusion up here in the top, Import, FBX Scene, and we're gonna to need to pick our scene. So it's that Cube Bake. And we can select any of these items that we want. And this looks good to me, and hit OK there. Now I have all these materials that were created and the, the actual geometry. So if I wanna look at my cube here, you can see it right there. It's got the textures applied. Here's the texture itself. Since that is kind of a cut UV, it's, it's applying it and it knows what it needs to do there. All right. So that's looking pretty good. So everything is there, the diffuse and the specular. And it brought in my camera and it brought in the two lights that I created as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete this camera in a minute. I'll leave it for now. But what I need to do is create a render node and then I can output it here. And so that camera position, if I open up Blender, go back to the layout mode and go to my camera mode here, you can see that's what our camera is seeing in our scene. And you can see it's the exact same camera position here in DaVinci Resolve. So it brought in that camera at the exact location. The properties are all the same, so which is really cool. So on the render node, I wanna use an OpenGL render to use my graphics card. I'm gonna enable lighting and shadows. You can see this looks a little crazy here. So what I need is go to these lights and turn down the intensity quite a bit. and put some decay on these as well. So the lighting looks a little more similar and you can see this little weird spot here and that's because of the camera. Uh, for whatever reason, Blender's cameras don't work that great in DaVinci Resolve. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new camera and I'm just gonna grab it here, pull it into my scene, attach it to the Merge 3D. I'll delete this original camera. And so this render, you can go ahead and select a new camera and it's not pointed in the same location. It's kind of inside the cube at the default location. So you're going to need to set the position of that camera back a ways. And get it to where you want it. Okay, with this new camera, we need to make some adjustments on the lighting again. It's going to require just a little bit more lighting and in the right positions as well. So we can reposition things as we need to. Or we can just move these light positions. All right, once you get your position set, you can go to the cube itself and go under this transform. And then if you want to rotate it, you can use this Y setting here. You can kind of see the different rotation and the different lighting on that object, which is really cool. So you got to make sure your media in 
uh, depending on what your blender animation was set up as, make sure these sliders are pulled all the way over. So your textures show up for the full length of your animation there. And one more thing, uh, let's go back to the material here. And you can see that material, that's, that's kind of what's showing up. The reason the black objects are there is because of the baking that I did with my material. So if you want to look at this material, you can hold down the middle mouse and you can look at the light on that material and you can open up the specular and you can change the settings there depending on what you want to see as far as fall off of the lighting glancing on that object. You can see using Blender with DaVinci Resolve, we can create those FBX objects, do some hard surface modeling, and bring them into DaVinci Resolve already textured and easily get these to show up as animated objects or something else within your scene if you want to do some compositing. And so it's really great to, to be able to use these two products together, especially since uh, you can get them for free. So Blender's free, obviously and I'm using the free version of DaVinci Resolve with this demonstration. So thanks a lot for taking a look at my Blender to DaVinci Resolve pipeline, bringing in FBXs and having those textured, bringing in lights and cameras even, although we've got to switch out the camera. But hopefully you learned something. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the comments below. Otherwise, take care, everybody. Thanks for watching.